Well, at 8pm this Monday and Tuesday night, Sky News Australia will air the two-part documentary Liberals in Power. It is an in-depth investigation into the inner workings of the Liberal Party during... <sighs> Turnbull, Morrison, Abbott. I liked Abbott, but the other two, forget it. Anyway, <laughs> its host, Chris Kenny, joins us now. Chris, always great to see you. Um, now, you've been working very hard on this doco. It screens Monday and Tuesday night. Looking forward to seeing it. What's the key, I guess, the key thing that surprised you when you were talking to all the various players that came out? Great to talk to you, Rowan, James and Rita. Yeah, it's been a lot of work. I've been interviewing so many people over so many months, getting this documentary together with uh, with a couple of great uh, producers in, in Mick and, and Richard while I've been doing my other show. And as you know, we've all seen this unfold. All of you guys uh, have talked to the key players all the way along through that tumultuous decade. And still, though, even when you're sitting down face-to-face -face in lengthy interviews with the key players, what overwhelms me is just, just how personal and how organic these things become, how no one really has a clear, precise idea of how they're going to bring down a leader or or reform the party or change direction these things happen very organically and there's all sorts of personal ambitions and ideological motives and uh, uh, and uh, personal uh, relationships that come into it but this this uh, this piece really allows all the key players to tell the story it's not me sort of making judgments about what unfolded it's us seeing what unfolded and seeing what the lessons are to get the the Liberals back into power again. And, and the thing that overwhelms me, of course, and, you know, many of us are old enough to remember it, of course, but after that Rudd-Gillard Rudd chaos, the shambolic period of Labor government, when Tony Abbott won that thumping victory in 2013, he said, we're a government that means what it says and says what it means. You thought the whole dynamic had been changed. We were going to get grown-up government. They were going to be stable and get on with business. And, of course, that didn't happen. Tony Abbott was torn down by Malcolm Turnbull. And to my mind, that is the one act. That is, that is the drama that changed everything. What should have been a strong period of coalition government was destroyed by Malcolm Turnbull taking down Tony Abbott. And I would have thought, Chris, one of the key lessons was don't trust bedwetters. And I think John Howard says pretty much the same thing in your show. Have a listen. There are those in the Liberal Party who say, really, to win back the teal seats, you've got to implement the teal agenda on climate change. Well, and other well, issues. well you, you don't win anything back by embracing the other person's policy. The last thing the Liberal Party should try and do is be Labor light. Yes, they may. Absolutely. Bedwetters. James. And Chris, I mean, you know, one of the things that I. I expect we're going to see a lot of is talk about uh, the different factions in that moderate faction. How much of a toxic influence did that moderate faction, being driven by Malcolm Turnbull, but with other players like Christopher Pine, you know, who could not accept conservatives being in power, how damaging has that been to the coalition over that uh, leadership period? Well, in, in my view is that they've got to wear the, uh, the, the bulk of the blame here, that it was that moderate faction that saw Malcolm Turnbull as their sort of, uh, as their leader, who was going to change not only the dynamic of the party, but the dynamic of the country. They were deluded in that. One of the best interviews, I think, in the documentary is with Senator James McGrath, who was part of that push, was one of the key lieutenants to try and get Turnbull into the prime ministership, and he admits now that was a mistake. He shouldn't have done it. If he had his time over, he wouldn't have done that. But to be fair, John Howard points out that factionalism in the party is a problem, but he says both sides have to wear some of the blame. But, but there's just no doubt that the moderates thought that there was this new Camelot under Malcolm Turnbull, and, well, look how that turned out for them. It, it was disastrous. So they really need to pull their head in and understand that the Liberal Party functions best when it's goes with its conservative, right-of-centre, mainstream instincts with, you know, some deference and tolerance to, to the policy uh, wishes of those so-called uh, uh, moderates or, or, or wets. But when they take, uh, when they take over, uh, you generally see uh, electoral disaster. People got to remember, they keep saying, let's try and chase the teal votes, win back the teals. 
This was the first election last year when the Liberal Party, the coalition, went to uh, an election with, with with a climate and energy policy attempting to match Labor. They went with net and zero by smashed, 2050. And they got smashed. And they got smashed. out for them. Yeah. And uh, as Peter Credlin's pointed out, the data shows that 80% of those Teal voters have never voted Liberal in the past anyway. Yeah. So they're not just Liberal voters. But I'm just interested, exactly. Chris, are we going to have a trigger warning prominently on the screen every time... <laughs> Malcolm Turnbull, Christopher <laughs> Pine, Julie Bishop, these <laughs> linos, liberals in name only, are on screen because I, I don't want any have any broken TV screens. <laughs> any tri trigger warnings just to warn the audience. <laughs> well... Look, it, it won't surprise you, Rita, even though, uh, full confession, as, as I have to confess often, I did work for Malcolm Turnbull as his chief of staff back when he was opposition leader and, and Tony Abbott took him down. Even, even though I have that history with Malcolm Turnbull, he didn't grant me an interview. He's not, he's not talking to Sky News anymore, oh, is Malcolm Turnbull. Shame. But uh, I, I must admit, I really enjoyed the interview with Christopher Pine because the difference with Christopher uh, is he's out of politics now. So he's quite frank about it. And I agree with you that he's one of the leading moderates who was the problem. He really got on board with, with Malcolm Turnbull. But the difference with Pine was he was always very close to Abbott and, uh, and he would have stuck with Abbott and, uh, and, and been a pretty strong supporter of Abbott's uh, if things had turned out differently. But uh, uh, I, I tell you what, there's some of them who just don't learn the lessons. They really think uh, they really want to turn the Liberal Party into a Teal Party. And that ain't going to work, as you just heard. Certainly John not going to happen, uh, Chris. He's the oracle. He, he's the one who knows this stuff. Uh, so I hope you interviewed Christopher Pine in the Cherry Bar, wherever that is, or whatever it is, <laughs> where he plotted and did, did all his bit. <laughs> no. uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, good luck with the show. Monday, Tuesday night, that's uh, Liberals in Power. Monday and Tuesday night here on Sky at 8pm.